I want to talk about identity and uh, I want you to think about this if you've ever experienced this but I meet people a lot of times on the streets uh, guys that just came out of prison uh, guys that just came out of uh, a homelessness or they're they are homeless and uh, the typical thing I hear is I don't have an ID card I don't have a picture ID I can't get a job I can't get uh, apply for school I can't even go cash a check I can't do nothing man you can't do pr pretty much you can't even open up a bank account you can't go to school you can do rarely anything without an ID identification so if anybody has ever lost an identification you know what I'm talking about you understand exactly what I'm saying losing your identification losing your identity is some serious stuff people will not they're not gonna let you do transactions they're not gonna let you uh, apply for school you can't apply for jobs you can't apply for uh, fun things like maybe if you want to join a karate club a soccer team most of the time they always ask you for an identification a picture ID with your picture on it your name your information where you live something and I want to tell you this because this is very important. But this is the same thing that people deal with every day. And before I became a believer, and maybe before be a lot of you guys became a believer, you really don't have an identification. You don't have an identity in Christ, that is. You don't have an identity in Christ. You know, you, you just kind of like, you're there. You know, the Bible says that Jesus says, Anybody who receives me as Lord and Savior, this is what Jesus talks about in the Bible, I, I am in him and he is in me and we are one. You know what I mean? And so, but when you are not, you don't have an identity, you can't do transactions in the kingdom. The kingdom of God does not know you. You don't have no part. You cannot make no, uh, you cannot make, you can't open up no bank accounts in the kingdom of God. You can't apply for no applications. You ain't going to get no positions in the kingdom of God. You're not going to get nothing. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And so I kind of want to talk about this because it's the same thing that happens in the world today. And so a lot of times you guys, maybe you're, maybe people I'm talking to, I have a big audience of different people, people who are non-believers, people who are scientists, uh, doctors, uh, 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 business people. I got all kinds of folks here that will be listening to this and they're not going to realize that you can't, there's things you can't do, you can or cannot do in the kingdom of God until you, what? Until you, uh, until you, uh, receive Jesus as Lord and your identity becomes your him. You, you are a son or a daughter of the King. You are a son or a daughter of Jesus, of God through Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus. So when you lose your ID card, oh, shook it, shook it now. You know, you, you don't just, and I'm talking about how much this relates into the kingdom of God. When you don't know who you are, God doesn't know you as his son or his daughter. You have no rights in the kingdom who have all these kinds of demons, all these kinds of evil spirits, curses, all kinds of stuff on their life, they cannot figure out how can I get rid of this? How can I get this off of me? How can I get this? How can I be able to sleep good at night with peace? How can I uh, be delivered? Can I be delivered? Can I be delivered from this? This torment at night? There's people who have insomnia. They can't figure out why can I just get some sleep? And the thing that you don't realize is if you have no kingdom rights, you have no identity in Christ. You have no kingdom rights. You have no authority. You have no authority in the name of Jesus. But, and I'll tell you this, that's not to say and that just don't get that twisted. That's not to say that God doesn't love you. That's not to say that God don't uh, care about you. He does. He wants you to come to him. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me 
so that whoever believes in him shall be his son or daughter in Christ and receive the Holy Spirit, receive the Holy Ghost. But what a lot of times is what we don't realize is when we're in the world, we can't figure out how come I can't, how come I don't feel at peace with God? I mean, I pray to him, I speak to him, but I never received him as my Lord and Savior. And so I want to offer that up right now. I want to offer that up that anybody wants to pray, and maybe you're not watching right now, but you're going to watch later, that you would say, you know what, Carlos, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to believe in your Jesus. I'm going to believe, I'm going to give Jesus a chance. I'm going to give the son of God who these Christian people call the son of God. All right. I'm just going to act like I'm in third person and I don't believe anymore, which is how I used to feel before I came to Christ. I thought these Christian people are a bunch of nuts, but in reality, there's some power. There's some power in, in believers. If you really believe and practice what you preach, if you actually step out by faith and trust and do the things that God talks about in his Bible that Jesus talks about, you will begin to see that, man, there's some power. Oh, there's some power. And it's much more powerful than the money in this world. It's much more better than the money in this world and the riches in this world and the things of this world. It's much more beautiful. Look, if you took a rich man, took a rich man, and you took a poor man, right? And you said, rich man, you have all the things of this world. I'm just giving an example. The rich man gets sick. The poor man gets sick. They both got COVID-19, right? They both sick, sick like dogs, both sitting next to next to each other on both bedsides rich man poor man the only difference is poor man has he's a believer and he has faith in god rich man i'm not gonna say the not ri rich man don't have faith but i'm just giving in this analogy of this story rich man has no faith in god all his faith is in his money and the things of this world and his investments and all those things that, that he has built his own kingdom, right? This is the rich man. The poor man, he built all his kingdom and he invested everything in God, in the things of God. You know, he, he ties to the Lord. He gives to the, he gives to the Lord. He says, you know what, Lord, I'm going to bless people. I, I'm, I'm going to be faithful to you, Lord. You, I'm, my identity is in you. And I know who I am in Christ, right? But I'm poor. They both get sick with COVID-19. Home Skittles over here, rich man, he ain't got no identity. He ain't got no identity. He got no rights to the kingdom. If both of these men get sick, the chances of this poor man with his faith and strength are much more possible that he continues to get better, right? Begin to begin to get healed. He says, Jesus, you're the healer. I want, I ask you in the name of Jesus, heal me, heal my body, kill this COVID-19, kill this virus. He be, his faith begins to rise up. He begins to get better. His, he loses all of his sickness and he gets out of the hospital. Home Skittles over here, he ain't got no faith. He ain't got no faith in the Lord. He ain't got no, his faith is in his money, his wealth, his investments, his talents, and everything about himself and science probably. But no Jesus, right? He goes and he dies. Take any of those riches with him. I'm just saying. No, you don't take note of those riches. And the moral of the story is not to say you must be poor in order to be closer to God. That's not the moral. I'm just giving you an example. You can be rich and still have faith in the Lord and still be on fire for Christ. David was. The point is, it doesn't matter of the things of this world. You can have some serious rights and 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 and, and some power that this these rich folks ain't got about you 
enter the kingdom and have an identification with Jesus, with God. Have an ID card and have rights into the kingdom of God. It's so important to have an ID card in the kingdom of God. When you don't have an ID card, you can't do much. So I'm going to pray for you guys. Anybody who wants to pray and have rights into the kingdom, Father, just repeat after me. Say, if you, if you really mean this, if you really mean this, just pray after me. And you're going to feel all this heaviness, all of this weight come off of you. All this sin, everything, you're going to feel it come off of you. And you're going to feel so free. And, and you're going to enter into the kingdom. Watch. Check this out. Just trust me, guys. So say, Father, Father God, I, I, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins, for die for me, Lord. And uh, Lord, I don't deserve this. And, uh, but I thank you for, for sending him and I receive him as my Lord and Savior. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to enter into me. There you go. Forgive me of all my sins, Lord. Forgive me of all my sins, everything I've done, every person I've hurt, every word that has been spoken that was wrong. Forgive me, Lord, and deliver me from these things. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, you're welcome into this place. In all darkness, I command you to go. All curses, I command you to go. You don't have no place in the kingdom of God. Darkness has no place with lightness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lead me and guide me in your ways. And now that I have an identification with you, Lord, I thank you and I praise you. And may you continue to lead me and guide me. Help me to understand your word. Help me not to fall asleep when I read your word, the Bible. Help me, Father. I thank you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. God is good. God is good. Yes. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Fill every person watching. Fill them. There you go. I want everybody just to start speaking in tongues where you're at right there. We're praying over those who are coming through that are going to enter into the kingdom of heaven through this prayer. We're praying for them. Give them the Holy Spirit. Allow them to speak in unknown tongue, Lord, that you would bless them. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. Touch them, Lord. Touch them with your grace, your mercy, your goodness, your favor, Father. There you go. Help them not to be embarrassed of you, Lord. Help them not to be embarrassed of your word. It says that if you don't know me, you ignore me in front of men. I ignore you in front of my father. Lord, we will not ignore you. We will not be ashamed of the gospel. We will not be ashamed of you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. There you go. Thank you, Father. We praise you. Thank you for everyone watching. And may the Lord just continue to bless y'all. If you are blessed by this, uh, this talk, please post something in the comments. If you were touched by this, please post something in the comments and share this video. God bless you guys. God bless y'all.